So why has this happened like it has? So first off, despite repeated warnings, many governments and healthcare to delivery systems were ill-prepared and efforts and spend moving forward will go towards addressing this problem so we won't have similar situ situations where uh, simply the systems aren't prepared for uh, pandemics. Supply chains have been shockingly insufficient globally in healthcare. Uh, many governments vowed to address this in the immediate aftermath and steps have been taken already to secure things like personal protective equipment. Uh, the financial impact of COVID-19 has been significant on hospitals and provider groups. Uh, many elective procedures have been curtailed significantly or even come to a complete halt. And organizations selling uh, solutions to those institutions have been severely impacted. Of course, many of you um, are aware that the elderly population has been particularly vulnerable and susceptible both to infectious disease and some of the healthcare delivery system shortcomings. And many solutions we believe will go towards fixing this as well. Um, physician burnout, medical professional burnout and stress is real and growing. The challenges of dealing with this pandemic on the front lines has uh, not been easy. And technology though filled with lots of promise around efficiency is not a solution. Um, it certainly can help, but it must be tied to workflow efficient. In the U.S., many U.S. citizens are both underinsured and still uninsured, meaning they don't have enough health care coverage to deal with the challenges associated with the pandemic. And many states um, will focus especially hard on this challenge because they ultimately will bear some of the costs. And of course, digital health solutions are really poised to help drive a reimagined interaction between patients and the healthcare delivery system. And so uh, we're excited by some of those prospects. So as far as investment goes, the healthcare sector has been better positioned, yet not immune to the financial stress of the economy. As we just noted, hospitals and other healthcare providers have been particularly vulnerable. And certainly some manufacturers of other types of goods um, have found themselves facing challenges as people aren't going to see their clinicians quite as much. And a big concern is the impact that people with uh, multiple chronic diseases and significant health challenges who have avoided care as a result of COVID-19, what the influx of those patients will likely do to the system um, in addition to the challenges COVID-19 is pr presenting. On the venture capital side, uh, many firms have been focused on securing their existing portfolio companies, making sure those companies have enough capital to weather the storm, helping them identify areas where they can cut, how to manage through this crisis, and how to potentially even reinvent their own businesses. Um, further, Venture capital organizations have been looking to identify new value opportunities, things that have been repriced as a result of the market, and also solutions that can thrive in the expected evolved healthcare delivery system. Are there particular things that are going to do better as a result of there being um, new ways people might seek care or have care paid for or changes elsewhere? And we believe digital health startup investment will likely be stronger than other venture sectors because of some of these um, characteristics of digital health companies. But we also think there'll be many buying opportunities because of some of the macroeconomic drivers and challenges. So we expect to see lots of different companies who, again, may have repriced their financing or may have uh, opportunistically had adapted their business models for such solutions. Now, 2020 was off to a phenomenal start. This is data going back all the way to 2011 from Rock Health, which um, tracks funding of US deals greater than $2 million. And you can see uh, Q1 was off to a fabulous start. Uh, 2019, um, was still one of the top years ever, though slightly below 2018 for digital health investment. 
Um, we expect, of course, uh, investment in digital health to slow this year, but still to be a strong year, given some of the, the other drivers we discussed. So where has the money been going? So in digital health, we've found that uh, telemedicine, health data and analytics, uh, clinical decision support, and mobile health apps have all um, received more than $300 million. And if you look at remote monitoring and tying that to mobile health apps, you know, that jumps that whole category up even further. And this source is Mercom Capital Group. Um, in a recent survey that Rock Health did, they uh, went out to investors and asked, what are the areas that are going to likely grow post uh, COVID-19 pandemic or because of the pandemic? And certainly telemedicine tops the list. Uh, remote monitoring is right behind it. And then things where you can check symptoms, use triage tools, um, other digital therapeutics, so things that can be prescribed by a physician that has um, gone through a rigorous approval process, and then things like expediting drug discovery and or clinical trials meets the list, as does clinical decision support. So there have been a number of significant financings in the first part of the year so far in digital health, uh, areas like telemedicine and American Well, Alto Pharmacy, top of the list, is a digital pharmacy. Concerto and Tempest are both using precision AI to uh, address oncology um, patients. So uh, still some major deals and uh, major focus in the space. And M&A are certainly occurring as well. You can see in practice management solutions, there were seven transactions in Q1. So as uh, COVID-19 was starting to um, hit the world globally, there were still a number of transactions there. Data analytics, areas like billing, clinical decision support, telemedicine all had uh, three deals. So um, by these data, this is still a very healthy sector so far. And certainly if you look historically how many billion dollar digital health exits there have been. You can see in the last two years, 2018 and 2019, there have been a, a significant increase in the number of billion dollar digital health exits. Companies like Ping An's Good Doctor, Flatiron, Livongo, all have been uh, well north of uh, $2 billion and with Ping On being the largest at seven and a half billion. So these are um, signs that the sector's maturing, the companies are getting bigger, and the opportunities are there for nice exits. So why do we think digital health is going to um, really begin to uh, take off at a faster clip than it's historically done? Well, first, regulation and reimbursement has been uh, positive for digital health. The FDA has been very flexible and has quickly approved market access to diagnostic tools, uh, therapeutics, et cetera, that are aiding the COVID-19 fight. CMS, which in the US uh, manages the Medicare and Medicaid programs nationally, um, have eased rules around HIPAA for telemedicine, that is the privacy regulations around telemedicine, They've expanded home care coverage and payments associated with that, payments to hospitals, uh, COVID-19 testing for Medicare patients, and accountable care organizations. They've allowed extensions and the abil ability to uh, keep their financial risk status uh, into the following year. And all of that, um, all of those uh, easements on regulations have made the environment more attractive for, for digital health. And certainly telemedicine and remote patient monitoring are two of the areas that have benefited most from uh, reimbursement changes. And ultimately we believe there'll be less regulation in the short term. It will evolve midterm, but it's gonna be very difficult to put all of this back in the box post COVID-19 as patients, consumers, um, health systems, payers, et cetera, um, adapt to these uh, changing 
environment. Um, here's just an example of remote patient monitoring, how Medicare reimbursement, and this is for if you were to have a thousand patients, how in a facility, in a non-facility, these codes for initial setup and education, generating and transmitting data, monitoring and monitoring again, there are all these different CPT and payment codes associated with it. So now medical professionals are going to uh, have the opportunity for reimbursement either tied with a hospital or on their own for treating these patients with uh, remote patient monitoring solutions. And again, this isn't specific to COVID-19, but it's part of the evolution um, of what's going on. And of course, consumers are embracing digital health faster. So COVID-19 has really um, seen the uh, downloading and adoption of digital health solution apps at a much faster clip. This comes from a Morgan Stanley report. And over time, when you talk to consumers, they're expected to place an elevated focus on health and wellness. Once you start using these apps and get familiar with them and have a habit of going to them uh, on a significant basis, and you can do things with them in a way that you haven't previously, um, we expect the adoption will, will certainly uh, be higher than it has been historically and uh, continue to be at rates that we haven't seen previously. So amongst the, the digital health sectors that we are expecting uh, to have a boost post COVID-19, certainly telemedicine, uh, being able to remotely look at and receive patient care from the comfort of your own home or own facility without having to go into the hospital or into the doctor's office. Uh, we just referenced the remote patient monitoring uh, solutions. Behavioral health is a very hot topic and there's a ton of innovative ideas and innovative products and innovative apps that are able to interact with patients and more and more people are getting comfortable using um, tools to manage their behavioral health outside of a doctor's office. Uh, we referenced the clin clinical trials evolution before. Um, predictive AI that is actionable, not just identifying issues, but also um, giving tools to clinicians and others that are actionable and you can do something about. And finally, the aging in place. Um, the healthcare delivery system has failed our elderly in many different ways. And there are a lot of efforts and a lot of spends gonna go into making sure we can deliver better care uh, more easily to our elderly population. And these are themes that are not specific to one market, but are really consistent globally as we see um, in many different nations. So with that, um, I'm gonna just show one last slide on telemedicine and this comes out of a McKinsey report that approximately a quarter billion dollar opportunity exists to um, evolve um, really remote uh, telemedicine delivery of care to patients um, by changing um, some of the care to virtual urgent care, virtual office visits, virtual home health care, and uh, medication assistance through tech. And you can see many of these areas are only scratching the surface right now. And this is where telemedicine offers a really big opportunity. So with that, I'm going to stop given our time and open it up for any questions that I can hopefully answer. Alan, this was fascinating. Do you mind if I ask a question? No, please, please. All right, so, so given this accelerated demand for digital health solutions, do you anticipate that there will be a um, shorter time to exist for these kind of startups? It's a great question. I think, first of all, um, the space is, is obviously um, received a lot more attention, a lot more uh, belief that things can move faster now. And so I think we'll, we will definitely see um, select companies, probably in those areas that I uh, described just a moment ago, will have opportunities for exit faster than they might have before COVID-19. 
So I think that the, the situation um, will see greater adoption of digital health, greater sales, greater growth, and as a result, um, companies that have available capital will look to bring those best solutions under their umbrella. And so we'll see more um, acquisitions that way, and certainly um, those companies that are able to maintain their independence if the capital markets are healthy enough, we'll look to the public markets as well. That makes a lot of sense. And um, there's a question from Rina about the geographies, um, where we can anticipate, uh, where, what are the countries where this digital health uh, evolution will go faster? Are there any specific areas to look at, maybe Israel? So Israel has been a pioneer in the adoption of digital health, certainly the major uh, health plans, if you will, uh, Clalit, Maccabi, et cetera, have been using digital health solutions for quite some time and they've been pioneers in that space. I think um, some of the Asia Pacific markets like China have been, we've seen growing adoption of digital health solutions like Ping An Healthcare and, and others. And certainly the United States and uh, select markets in Europe, Germany has a big push and initiative to reimburse for digital health, the UK with the NHS, France, et cetera. So th those are some markets. And then um, other places like Brazil is really moving quickly to adopt and implement digital health solutions and have had some government um, assistance as well to push forward things like the, the legalization of telemedicine, which didn't exist previously. 